Hello. Today, as a change of pace, I will be talking about my own experience with Worm and how I found it in general. So, way back a few years ago, I was looking through TV tropes because a few years ago I had a phase where I would just sink all my time into that bottomless pit of a time sink. And then I found Worm because I was looking for interesting things to play, interesting things to read, and interesting things to do in general, yeah. I, I remember specifically it was from the Nobody at her Nightmare entry, because I was really enjoying, because I, don't, I honestly enjoy a lot of stories, where character growth is a major thing, and it develops the characters, and it pushes the plot forward, and although that sounds very basic, you'd be surprised what kind of stories don't fall into that. That does... I admit bias the kind of stories I do like, but regardless. I, moving on, I found this during the Behemoth arc. Yes, I was one of the lucky few, or unlucky few, who read it before it was actually finished. So on the one hand, it was impossible for me to get spoiled on anything. Almost anything. But on the other, I had to wait every few days for a new chapter, and that was agonizing at the time. Gotten used to it now, considering how much of it fandom and other things I'm reading, but still. And so past that point, once it eventually finished, I went in and binged it again. I went two weeks of just every spare minute I had, I just read it again. Just read it again. Because I love the story, I love the characterization, I love Taylor's growth, and the end was bittersweet, but not unexpected, to be completely honest. It was a good story, it followed, like, you know, the nice old Jungian uh, hero's journey, just, you know, to make it a bit more, you know, predictable. Was, yeah. So, then it got busy, and I didn't really do anything for it. But, eventually, you know, end of the year, you have a break, you have time, I started looking for some fan fiction. Because, you know, I read it again and again, and I realised I needed something more. And that specific more would have been something different, because you can only read the original so many times before it gets to the point where you're like, I know this back to front. So I started reading fanfiction, and I started reading everything, and I started off looking at TV tropes, and then I started looking at a while both recommendations, then eventually I found uh, Space Battles, and yeah, that's how I got into it. I found space panels, I started reading stuff like um, uh, Memoirs of a Human Flashlight, Silencio, not Silencio, I don't think that was around for a little bit. No, yeah, it was uh, Silencio, um, Starry Eyes, which I'm really happy has recently come back to life. Even though, honestly, I've built it up in my mind so much that it's not what I expected anymore, but that's my fault rather than Helmets. But also, um, Copacetic, which at the time only had about two or three chapters in it, really says how long I've been here, doesn't it? I didn't start posting for a long time. For the most part, I just favorited chat story storylines and just read them over and over again. But because of this, you know, you miss updates and stuff, and I realized that if I made an account and started doing that, it would make things much easier. So I did. And I didn't post for even longer. Eventually I did post one or two things, two small chapters and then a bigger one about uh, essentially putting character from, what's it, Twi, no, yeah, from Pact into uh, Blake and just making a bit of a parallel and all that back in 2014, I think. Before it was really finished and it was just, yeah, me just putting it in. Originally it was quite nice, but then it just started being shoehorned into it. Just shoehorn the references, and then I just had to finish it and leave it because it was just getting worse and worse the more I tinkered with it. And I then just wrote, wrote a few more things, another about a guy in Australia that's very depressing because, all things considered, it is really nice to explore how sad people can get. And I don't mean that in a mass, in a sadistic way, I mean as a, like if you watch a character and it can give you an emotion, that emotion doesn't have to be happiness. If it's sadness, if it's depression, if it makes you think, that can also make a really beautiful story. And I guess that's why mostly most of the things I write are bittersweet to some degree. Or just purely sad, but 
yeah. Um, because I know a lot of people read fan fiction for, you know, to feel good, to have fun, and I read it to experience things. It's the same reason you read in general, it's to widen your horizons, experience things, and just have a great time. That doesn't necessarily mean everything has to be a happy ending. So yeah. But um, given this, given everything else, starting up again, because you know, you know, they get so many weeks of holiday, and I just things fell by the wayside, and writing worm was one of them. I did keep on reading, but I've had some ideas literally unfinished for years. One of them has thankfully been uploaded since, but a few of them I'm still working on. <sighs> yeah, that's really how I've been in the worm fandom. I don't want to just go through and have to say, yeah, I read this, 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 this. So I'm just going to talk about what I've seen change in the fan. The most powerful one is fandom and the mimetic nature of a lot of the th things being distilled into hyperbolic versions of what they used to be. And so what I mean by this is specific, in particular, grim dark, or the idea that worm itself is excessively dark. And I really don't think so. It's quite hopeful, it's a deconstruction of the genre, which by default means you're going to be shining light at the darker aspects of it. But I don't think it's too dark, because there is hope. There are escapes, it's not horrifically depressing, and the people that say that the bullying campaign is too unrealistic, you've lived a pretty good life. <laughs> Let's just say that. Bullying can get that fucked up, and I re remember Wildo actually saying, that he based all this stuff off experiences he's had or things he's heard from other people. Speaking of which, there's actually um, also now the notion that word of God is contrary and completely baseless. And I don't like that. I like the argument if you say, death of the author, I want to interpret it how I am, and anything outside the medium itself is irrelevant to how I interpret the story. That is completely fine. But for the people that just say, because it's so contradictory, it's all that, just Walbo likes to mess with us, yeah? He likes to post ma mathematicians' answers. He likes to just do things that mess with us in half the time. Yes, he's not taking it seriously, but that doesn't mean you can discount everything he says if you want to go from a, from a purely technically canon perspective. Plus, then, Bannon seeped in, and that's why I think the grim, dark, grim, derp thing is going on, and then we have all the character stereotypes and all the bad things like that, and it just... At least we've finally gotten to the point where nobody likes the locker scene. It... Which is good, because if you remember in the original, they don't show it either. Valbo does not actually show the locker scene. And that should be a sign telling you that you probably should include it yourself. Because it is very hard to do that correctly without it being fucking horrible. Of course, notable exceptions exist, and I myself am not uh, innocent of writing the locker scene now and then, but you have to keep it fresh. You have to make sure it's not just the same horrifying thing over and over, because that is groomed up. That is just, she's stuck in a fucking locker and you're making it horrifying, and there's no real point to it. It's not even good horror. Just discuss, so it's... Just no. Just no. Okay. Uh, there's also been a move away from or alt power tailors to actually explore other characters. Of course, this is partly due to the community consensus to mostly stop posting one-liners and just say, hey, what would happen if Taylor had this power? What if Taylor had that power? What if Taylor had this power? And not actually giving any thought or actual substance to any of the ideas that would make them an interesting thing to read. But thanks to the efforts of various people writing various pieces of various fan fiction, which focuses on other people, for example, Dragon, Golem, Amy, Lisa, just... Danny even, Danny's getting a lot of love, which is nice. Um, the, the trio even. It's all amazing, I love it. There is a dearth of uh, original characters, really. There's, they don't get much love. But given how large the character roster actually is, the number of capes you can choose from, or non-capes, or whatever the hell you want to do, it's not even really necessary, because you can just, sure, it's not the best to just make a character, minor character, just an OC stand-in, but it's not too bad as well either, you could help um, clarify some parts of their personality on characterization if you feel like it would help, yeah. 
also, this is a bit of a mixed basket, it's good and bad. Um, people are coming, more people are coming into the worm fandom who only know it through the fandom. Who didn't necessarily read worm first, they maybe read a fan fiction between worm and a crossover or something like that, and that got them into it. Or they were just browsing and found it or stumbled upon it. And for the most part, that's a good thing. And the community is police, self-policing well enough that you don't really get that kind of issue where things go awry too often. Well, where I go anyway, on space battles, sufficient velocity, those are still pretty well um, moderated and self-policed. I have no idea how fanfiction.net or archive of our own are faring for that sort of thing. But yeah, um, of course this does sometimes bring in idiots who think fanon is accurate. But to be fair, it's not like that <laughs> started with outsiders coming in. There's always been some people who are just that way inclined for the exaggeration and flanderization of characters because it makes it simpler and even though it reduces depth. Yeah, that's mainly been my experience with Worm so far. I really can't wait until Wildo starts writing the sequel. So while I have been enjoying Twig, <laughs> I've been wanting it to also end because that means that it will start working on the sequel to Worm. Even if it's not about Taylor, because God knows her story is done, she should not need any more characterization. It should, but I just love the world and I love the whole superhero deconstruction and I just I can't wait to read what he's written again. That's all for this week, see you guys next time.